there is anything that I have learned in the last four and a half, almost five years of being in business, it's how not to market. If you're wondering, well, who the hell are you and why are you talking to me about marketing tips? Well, I'm Heather Ferris. I run a Pinterest marketing agency where I help clients and students just like you to get better at marketing to their audience. I've been helping people with Pinterest marketing for years and in the most recent months I've added content marketing strategy in there as well because I've seen what works and I've seen what doesn't work and today we're going to talk about the six things that you can do differently that will make marketing feel good for you. Selling can feel way outside of your comfort zone. I come from sales. I come from selling 36% interest loans to people who can't afford them and doing really, really good at it. In fact, that's how I got started in my business because I went from selling 36% interest loans and making more on commission every month that I was making on my salary. That's how good I was at it. And I couldn't sleep at night because it just was not in the best interest of the people I was selling to or mine to be in that job. And they were fast tracking management for me. I was in the management program. It's just overall like, I felt really good about the work itself, the admin side of things, but I did not feel good about selling loans to people who couldn't afford them. Long story short, I quit that job. I started a bookkeeping job where I took like 60% pay cut. I can't like, I can't even fathom how much less money I was making. And that actually allowed me to bridge the gap between working corporate to working in my business and doing this full time. I think I'm pretty good at talking about selling in a human way and not doing it in a way that just feels gross. No cold calling, I used to cold call people. No sending cold postcards to hundreds of people a week. None of that, okay? We are just going to talk about what makes marketing feel good. Tip number one is to stop using weird sales funnels and sales tactics that do not align with your audience and your values or ultimately your goals in your business. For a long time, I thought that I needed to have these intricate sales funnels and I needed to have all these things in place and a really intricate email marketing follow-up system and write like super awesome sales copy in order to make sales. None of that mattered and none of that actually brought me any sales. You know what brought me sales? Providing content like this on a platform like YouTube, getting on Instagram stories, talking to my actual audience, talking to the people I was serving and really building a human connection with those people. Because at the end of the day, what really matters is the transformation that you're providing and the impact that you're having in their business. Is it real? Is it valuable? Is it tangible? All of those things matter. And if you're trying to put together weird sales funnels that make no sense for you right now in your business, sales funnels work. I have a number of them at this point and they do work, but you really need that human component and you need the things that the people who you're helping, you need those transformations that they're gonna get you need to know what they're, and I don't, I don't want to advocate towards marketing towards pain points, but you can spin it. You need the benefits of what your service can do for them. You need to have those sales conversations to really understand how your service or your product is going to help them before you can ultimately turn it into a high powered content marketing machine. You just have to have it in place. If I could go back and tell myself four and a half years ago, one thing it would have been to do more connection-based marketing and less sales funnel cold marketing. Dear past Heather, stop worrying about the sales funnel. It does not make a damn difference. Number two, weed out the customers and the clients that are not a good fit for your offer. Do not take money from them if you cannot help them. I don't care what your return policy is. I care about if you can actually help that person on the other end, because if you cannot help them and you're taking their money anyways, that's not going to feel good. It's not going to leave you feeling good. Like you had a good experience in that sales uh, exchange. They're not going to feel good. You're not going to feel good. It's overall going to be gross. 
and then it's gonna kind of push you away from doing sales again. The ch exchange needs to be equitable and it needs to feel good for both parties. Number three, and this is something that I have struggled with, not necessarily for myself, I have struggled with this when it comes to messaging, but I have struggled with this with other people in their sales process. I have been on the receiving end of a sales exchange where deliverables and transformation were not properly explained. I was left feeling wanting and like that person was a total garbage can. So you never want to be on the receiving end of total garbage can testimonials. You don't want people going out into the world saying bad things about you because people talk. Referrals are the number one source of business for a lot of people. So you want to really be clear about the transformation and deliverables that you are going to provide to your client or customer. Don't lead them astray. Don't use fake testimonials. Do not use fake sales like tactics like testimonials and reviews just don't do it it's yucky number four talk about the times that didn't work out for your clients and your customers to your pre-clients and customers why do this why talk about our failures because failures make us seem real it makes us feel like we're an actual human being who hasn't gotten it right 100 percent of the time I don't care what fancy business is marketing to you out there. I don't care who is telling you that you can make $100,000 in 90 days. Don't get me going on that. Don't get me going on that. There is no way in hell every single person is going to get the utmost experience with you. So how can you avoid those pitfalls with future clients and customers in the future by being upfront about the failures that you've had in the past? If I'm completely honest with myself and with my pre-clients, I am making sure to inform them that product-based e-commerce Pinterest strategies take longer than digital content Pinterest strategies. For some reason, product validation and customer trust takes a lot longer unless your product is just really seasoned and people know who you are. Make sure that you're really, really honest with the people who are coming through and who wanna hire you on timeframes and on failures that you've had in the past so you can help them avoid those same pitfalls in the future. Number five, stop making people feel ashamed for their pain points. Now I mentioned earlier, I don't like marketing to pain points because I don't, I don't like marketing to pain points. If you need my product, you will buy it. If you don't need my product, you won't buy it. I don't wanna have to tell you that you're gonna lose hundreds of thousands of dollars or make them feel ashamed for where they're at in their business. If they're bad at sales, I don't wanna make them feel like they're bad at sales. I wanna give them hope because if there's hope, then there may be a path through. We could probably build a little bridge to get from feelings of despair to hope and making sales. So please, for the love of God, be an ethical marketer and stop making people feel ashamed for their pain and what they are going through right now. It doesn't feel good for either party. And it makes their it makes this feeling of desperation happen in the conversation and in the relationship. And when there's a feeling of desperation happening in the relationship, it feels icky on both sides, but it especially feels shitty for the person sitting in the chair that really needs the help from you and you being the salesperson. I'm just gonna throw that out there. This is too, like all of these scenarios are from my own personal experience. Tip number six, choose a platform and be really honest with yourself about that platform. When we are talking about content marketing, oftentimes many people think, most people think that content marketing is like having to show up on every single platform or be present on every single platform. No, it does not mean that. And let me explain. So my chosen platforms are always, always my website, my YouTube channel, Clubhouse, and that's really it for marketing and finding clients. The rest of it really happens in DMs on Instagram. So if I'm on YouTube and I'm filming a video like this and I'm replying in the comments and I tell someone, hey, DM me, I can probably help you better in a one-on-one -on -one conversation or I'm in a clubhouse room, I'm talking about whatever I'm talking about for the day, 
and I tell somebody, you know, if you need further help on this, just shoot me a DM. I'd be happy to talk it through. That is where a lot of the connection and the further of the conversation goes. But ultimately, I have chosen my platforms very strategically for my business goals and for the people I'm serving and the audience that I know need my offers. So YouTube and Clubhouse for my video and audio, my blog is where I put all of my YouTube and blog content. And I follow it up with Pinterest. So Pinterest marketing is my last thing that I drive traffic to my site. So I want you to choose a platform and be really honest with yourself. What kind of content are you gonna have to create for that platform? What is the time commitment? What kind of audience is on that platform and what do they need? And are they a good fit for me? If you're trying to you're trying to hustle for leads and sales on Instagram, but your audience maybe isn't buying baby clothes on Instagram, then really where do you need to go? Okay, think about that and be really honest with yourself. I really, really, really wish I could go back and tell myself four and a half years ago, that you don't have to be everywhere and get the hell off Facebook and Instagram. Choose a different platform, work on Google SEO. If I could go tell myself that four, four and a half years ago, I would have taken Google SEO seriously and that would have been the first course that I purchased. Instead of purchasing Facebook ads and Pinterest marketing and all of these other things that I purchased that I didn't need, I really needed and should have focused on content marketing on for SEO first and then pushed out all my content to the other platforms. So I get really, really honest with myself with my content marketing strategy for the month. What kind of content do I need to create? Where are they in their user journey? How can I take them to the next step? What do these conversations kind of look like? These are all things that I consider when I'm thinking about what platform I'm producing content on. And I think a lot of people just get really caught up in, oh, I have to be on Instagram or, oh, I have to be on Facebook. If, that doesn't, if those platforms don't feel good for you, guess what? There are other platforms that you can get on. If you want to be on Clubhouse and you can't figure out how to get on Clubhouse because you're an Android user, pick yourself up an iPad. They're cheap. Pick yourself up an iPod Touch. Those are very inexpensive ways that you can get into the Clubhouse scene before they actually release to Android users. If you want to make marketing feel good for you in 2021, I suggest at least digesting some of these things that I talked about today and really figuring out where they fit into your strategy and your business and how you can better build a community and a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the people that you are bringing in. Because at the end of the day, humans over dollars, we as people matter, we as people want connection, we as people want to feel understood. If you can do those things, those three things really well, you will feel like your sales are a lot easier to attain at the end of the day. If you would like help with your content marketing strategy, I offer one-on-one -on -one content strategy like mentorship and we basically break down your customer journey, the content you should create for your users, how to find keywords you can rank for, and I walk you through my entire process for that strategy. So if you want help with that, make sure you click the link down in the description below. And in the meantime, if you need marketing tips of any kind, click on over and watch one of our videos over here somewhere, and we will see you next time.